assignment time. So your assignment is very simple. If you go to Google and type in abstract sculpture, you'll find loads, absolutely loads of reference for this assignment. And your assignment is to produce an abstract sculpture in ZBrush using the tools I've shown you, using the methods I've shown you. Um, I want you to produce those initial forms and only use the brushes that I allowed you to use. So in other words, you could produce just about any of these um, using like the move brush and everything else. But the real trick of it is, is for me grading it. And to, to grade this, I'm looking at one simple thing, and that's uniformity. Um, what I, what I want to start seeing is uh, not such of a big change between the forms and another form. I'd rather see that you had some forethought in the base mesh and made that change at a Z-sphere level and moved it out rather than try to use the move tool and move out the polygon structure. This strict way of kind of grading you is going to help you later on throughout these lessons as I get more and more details on things because if you do not have your base mesh down pat um, it hurts everything else along the way. It hurts your topology, it hurts uh, the fact that there is no topology to begin with but uh, topology is a later lesson also but it hurts your map generation, um, how well these transverse to other programs. If I ported this over to Maya, I would have to certainly port a higher version over to Maya just to get the understanding of what the what this really is right in this area. If And keep in mind, you know, Maya can only support so many polygons. So uh, think about it. If, if it's a practical application of a still life that you're doing in Maya and you're rendering it out, you know, you could have them maybe 500 to 800,000 polys, or depending on your machine, maybe a million. But then you're going to hit a wall, okay? So whether you're going over to illustration work or whether you're going over into game design, this will help you, I promise you. All right, so when you're done with your assignment, um, what, what I want to do is have your ZTL file. That's the only way I'm going to be able to grade this efficiently. Um, I was thinking of having you guys do documents and exporting them as documents, but really I won't get anything out of that. I have to rotate around and kind of see your mesh at all angles. So it's going to be a bear for me to grade, but uh, it'll be worth it. Now, if you did want to show other people what you have accomplished, um, certainly a good way to do that is export this as a PSD file and then turn it into a JPEG and put it in a any kind of form that we might be using with, along with this class. Another thing I'm going to show you is um, for presentation purposes only is the fact that you can go in here and I'm going to allow a material so if you go in here and say this material right here is not going to be this material anymore it's going to be uh, something like this one. Okay. So, which gives it a whole different look altogether because the shadow regions act differently with the light. The light bounces off the object different. And we'll get into material making and all that later. But this is this is a whole different look from what I had it. So you're allowed to have your forms have different materials for presentation purposes only. And you can document export these as PSD and put them in Photoshop and turn them into a JPEG. And then you can put them in a forum. So that's your assignment is to produce an abstract sculpture and the sculpture must be able to stand freely okay that's another thing I'm going to put out there because if you look at these all these sculptures are able to stand freely you know they they have some kind of base at the bottom I showed you that clip brush that allows you to flatten out the bottom so make it so they all have the ability to stand freely alright that's your assignment enjoy and on to the next chapter